What are we cooking up today? Elven Fencer Damage Carry. We've finally done it. We've cracked the code, the Da Vinci Code, with Tom Cruise and Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I don't think either of them were in that movie. All right, so what the he what the heck? What the heck are we looking at? I'm saying heck because it's the first 30 seconds. All right, what the heck is this? What what the H-E-L is this? Uh, we got Noto Sword, we got Royal Saber. First of all, what is this team? This is Fencer Nuke. What is Fencer Nuke? A while ago, uh, someone was claiming that Elvish or Elven Fencer does not have damage. This is objectively not true. You can, these have a row attack. If you have a row attack in this game, you can be damage fixed to kill. It doesn't matter what class it is. If you have a reliable row attack, you can easily kill things. So we are doing the impossible. Well, not really. Honestly, this is a very solid damage class. Uh, most people use it for support, but it can do damage. So what is this build? We have Runic Sword plus. Why Runic Sword? Um, Runic Sword has hybrid stats. It has physical and magical attack. And when you forge it with Fervorite, it becomes a 10 physical, 20 magical. So when you do Mirage Stab, it has better damage on the physical and magical potency. Uh, the reason I'm using Runic Sword is because the Spell Steel Sword, which also would have these stats at a, at a forge, also has magic defense plus three, but it does not have magic attack. So if we need the magic attack to hit like an armor for big damage, we can do that. Whereas if we go to Lightning Blade and armor, half of the damage is good, but the other half of the damage gets significantly reduced. So we can situationally use magic attack, but we have two Runic Swords. These have the exact same build. Sniper Amber Lens, Runic Sword Plus, Amethyst Pendant, Raven Plume, and then I used my Angel Shards, my Divine Shards, to get 10 Knowledge Dues and 10 Strength Dues, and they both received five of each, because you can only get five of each, to boost their Mirage Stab. These things do a ton of damage. We also have Gilberts for Offensive Order. Uh, he acts before them. He also Rapid Orders to speed the entire team up. So Offensive Order gives your entire team plus 20% damage. So when they do their row attacks, uh, it does more damage. We also have this unit here, uh, an Elven Archer. Now she's uh, these are over leveled. These three are over leveled. This was my like end game units. They're not damage carrying though. The damage is coming from these level 30, uh, four things. Now the reason we're running Virginia, oh, let me go through this first. All right, so why are we running this? This is the healer. <laughs> <laughs> the Elven Archer. Some people don't know this about Elven Archer, but if you use large aid kits or even any first aid kit or any heal and the Elven Archer gets hit, it produces a self, uh, the selfless heal. So restore minor HP to all allies, remove all debuffs. Now this can work in combat, but basically what we're doing is this Icicle Arrows twice, which does good damage to two targets and freezes them twice. So like it's up to four freezes, which helps, you know, get rid of key threats. So you can prioritize key threats. And you can also just deal damage and last hit and clean up things that aren't killed by the Mirage Stabs. Uh, and then you have Party Aid at the end of battle, and then you Selfless Heal. So it's a it's a group heal that restores 25% to all, and then it's a second group heal. And all of these can roll for crits, and right now its crit rate is 18%, which is decent. Uh, one thing you could do is drop this for something that gives crits. You could also run this if you really wanted to, and maybe remove... Uh, the pendant. So, for example, if you want to run uh, something like this, or I'm sorry, not the pendant. Yeah, you you could change this to a sapphire. You could just do one and a half attacks. Like you could do like an icicle and a wind arrow. That would be fine. And then switch this to sapphire if you really wanted to. This gives you more initiative and evasion. So if you have incoming spam, it reduces the the chance that it hits you. Uh, other things like all stats is fine. Uh, this is also decent. This gives you. You know crit rates which also affects your heals and it gives you evasion so this is very good for tanking but in the back the back line if you were to get focused if you were to get hit by assists and stuff like this uh, let's go back to what we were on now hybrid bows do benefit this class but there are no good hybrid bows that give like good stats so we're just opting for what were we on <laughs> we're on i think pp plus one bow let's find it that no not that definitely not that there's quite a few good ones, actually. Or were we on passive? Oh, yeah, this one. HP recovery. The HP recovery also makes it so that when these get healed, 
they get healed for more. Uh, but all right, so this is your healer, chip damage. You can also miss to conferral, but it's usually redundance. The, the offensive order is usually enough. And then I have this set to first action, so he'll banishing stab afterwards. Uh, you can defensive order, but really chip damage with banishing stab is fine. We have gambler's coin on front row, Elvin. So it does not hit Virginia. Now you can gambler's coin her because she does have uh, some true attacks in the form of maiden's hammer. She has this. So she has, well, she really has a true counter, we should say. But you gamblers coin the elves because they get true hits and true crits from Sniper Amber Lens. Now you get one of these from Furry Lands, one of these from Angel Lands. And then for these, I think you get one from the arena and then one from just like one of the stores or from playing the game. So running both of these. Now, do you need to run these Amethyst Pendants? No. Uh, you actually don't. <laughs> you can actually drop them for just like a Carnelian, uh, Ruby, whatever. You really just need one Mirage Stab that gets Hawkeye. That's it. So even though the build has like, sni like Sniper Amber Lens or even just normal lens is fine, but the crits plus the coin is really what's pushing the damage up here. Uh, now look at their stats, 54 physical attack, 71 magic attack. 55 physical attack 73. I also have slightly different growths. I custom made these two. So this one has offensive offensive and this one also has offensive offensive. Um, so they're both pretty much like uh, I think that's the best thing for them. They're fast enough. They have enough initiative. Uh, now in terms of initiative. So 39 and 39 on Raven Plume. And then when they get ordered, rapid ordered, they get to 59, which is incredibly fast. So he gets to 73 initiative, uh, she gets to 63, and then she gets to 51, which is pretty high. And then she has quick cover for the front row only. And you can just change it to elves too, if you don't need to quick cover him. Uh, but this covers true strikes. So if there's a true strike that would one shot them from like an enemy sword master, she just completely undoes that and negates it because she can easily tank a sword master. And then also she has uh, Maiden's Hammer, which is actually very big damage. So you have a few things going on here. Uh, this team, because it's evasion tanks, and most teams are susceptible to archer spam, I have Virginia as the party leader so that you take less damage from range assists. And she also doubles as a frontliner who can main tank and cover these, who usually will evade. On uh, this team, I actually don't have their evasion high because we kill them before we need to evade, typically. Because we have high initiative and we have basically you know, first mover advantage, where we just drop them really quickly. So it's a pretty weird team. Uh, the Runic Swords, there's not really too much you could replace with them because Mirage Stab is a hybrid attack, so you really want to get the damage on, like, of both stats up. So, for example, if you were to try to use, like, you know, a physical attack 25 weapon, you're just missing out on a lot of damage. Uh, it's 30 total damage uh, versus, you know, 25. And then there is a weapon that does kind of compete. Uh, King's Blade Cornex Plus does give you 30 total damage as well. Uh, now, keep in mind, most frontline enemies have higher physical defense than magical defense. So when you up your magic damage, you usually get more damage out of it. But you could run King's Blade Cornex. This is a very logical thing to uh, forge. And then, of course, you could run this if you want. You could run pretty much any 25 might sword. But just keep in mind that if you're fighting against tanks, there is a huge advantage to having you know, hybrid stats and mixed magic attack. So, all right. And then for other weapons, there's really not too much else that's like good. Uh, we're not running follow-up, so we don't want Hunter's Claymore. Uh, Zenoiran Sword is okay if you were to forge that. It gives you some bulk so that you can tank some hits like if they hit through your evasion, which does happen. Uh, but oh yeah, Spellsteel, I'm, I'm thinking of something else. Spellsteel does not give you magic defense. So this has higher stats than Runic Sword, but then when you forge them, they're the same. So you also just get magic defense and a magic attack if you want it. And the magic attack is really good at killing armors because it's 150 potency. And if you have 71 magic attack with 150 potency, you're one-shotting an armor. Uh, also, she can hit flyers, she can hit armors. We have true strike on both row attacks. We have damage increase. We have damage increase from offensive order, 20%. And then we have damage increase from inspiration and also crit damage increase. And they definitely will crit because they're using sniper amber lens. So these have a mirrored build. And of course they can lightning blade afterwards and also do like an evasive impetus, maybe go for a second Mirage Stab. You gain the ability to evade one attack when you hit with this. 
which allows them to then evasive impetus and then mirage stab again. So it, ha it kind of combos into itself and it's very fun. That's a pretty interesting build. All right, now let's show it. We've gone over the theory. So this is uh, end game level, you know, the final, ba the final boss battle. Uh, kills this group, kills this group. We're taking minimal, if any, damage. Kills this group, kills the group that has 50% more defense, which is very nice. Kills this group, kills this group, <laughs> kills this group. Uh, kills this, kills this, kills this. And this is without changing anything either. This is just like them attacking. Kills these, almost kills these, could probably optimize it. It looks like we're just getting debuffed from the shamans or something. Kills this, easily kills the boss, or one of the mini bosses. Let's check this mini boss. Almost kills these. Uh, if I had to guess, I think they're nullifying our attacks, so they're barely surviving and then dealing counterattack damage. Uh, kills that, almost kills that, kills that. So most of the things we kill, let's check this one. These ones blind you, even with the blind, look how much damage we're doing. So if I were to run anti-blind, we'd probably kill them. But even with the blind, we almost kill this boss group. That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> this is pretty effective. All right, now let's check out, let's do a few battles now, now that I've shown you what it can do. Now, obviously the, mo the mobility is the worst thing about it uh, because it's on Virginia. You don't have to be party leader Virginia. Uh, you can be a magic assist. I don't want to change because they're deployed. You can be magic assist, you can be range assist. This is okay. The main issue this team does have is mobility. Now, one thing I was actually considering was dropping Virginia or even the elf for a Radiant Knight, which would be pretty good. And then you could have, you could default to Radiant Knight unless you need anti-archer. And you would know that based on the map. So you could drop this for a Radiant Knight. It could do some chip damage and have way better healing. It would just row heal. Um, or whatever heal you want it to do. And it could also double as like a magic attacker and stuff like this. So you can switch that out if you want the better mobility. Let's deploy this other squad. So they don't back cap me. Here, let's go fight some stuff. Let's use an item. Now this would be a good like defensive unit. That's, it's kind of high investment. <laughs> well, it's it's high investment if you forge things. You don't necessarily need to forge the rune blades. You can probably get away with just running them. We're probably overkilling here. Let's check it out. Yeah, if we're doing 713 damage and they only have like 380 health total. All right, so offensive order, or I'm sorry, rapid order. All right, attack up. Icicle arrow. Do not despair. Mirage stab inspiration. Hawkeye. Yeah, <laughs> probably. You probably don't need to forge the runic blades, honestly. And for the other items, so we'll we'll like down, we'll scale it down so you don't have to run all these like crazy items. We'll scale it down a bit. All right, so if we were to optimize this, now I made this team comp yesterday, so I haven't had a ton of time. I'm just, I was able to get it to killing things consistently. All right, so Sniper Amber Lens, I would say is like a critical item for this build. Now Sniper Amber Lens makes almost anything insanely good. Uh, so like this plus Runic, and then Amethyst could be replaced with any, and literally any pendant, and then Raven Plumes are common. So that makes the cost not as steep. And you might not even need two of these. I was actually debating on making like an impetus. Like you could probably just make one. So you just need one sniper amber lens and then just impetus it so that it row attacks the front and then row attacks the back and then just Hawkeyes twice with Mirage Stab. You could probably just do that and just make this a utility unit and throw it in the back line. That's probably a better thing. And then have this be a Sainted Knight. That's probably a good way to optimize. Uh, but the damage is there. <laughs> and they're pretty hard to kill too, so. It's hard to kill, the damage is there, it doesn't have any weaknesses. And then if you want to speed it up, you can switch in different classes. So I'd say it's a pretty solid team. But I think we've proven that Elven Fencer is at least like A tier. As a damage carry, not even as a utility, as a damage carry itself. The other thing too is like Gambler's Coin. Oh yeah, look at that freeze too. You can freeze things up block to kind of mess up blocks before the attack goes off. You could also run Shamans if you wanted to, like a shaman to debuff the front row. The front row typically is tankier than the back row. Yeah. 
between the two of them. And then look at all look how many actions Virginia has. In most situations, she could just literally be a sainted knight. <laughs> and then you just have better mobility. And you just have to be careful. Now, they're not super susceptible to archers, right? Like some flying team comps are more susceptible to archer, like assist spam. This team, you could probably drop her for a sainted knight or drop this for a sainted knight and make it your party leader. Then just be zooming around the map. And also the nice thing about sainted knight is it completely negates, it reduces magic assist damage and they have row barrier which completely counters like huge enemy spells, especially like those witches that quick cast freeze you. Cause that's like an actual problem in some cases. All right, let's go. We can, uh, we can fight that, I guess. They're gonna kill one of us though. They have a tank, so they actually survive us. Looks like they kill one of us there as well. Here's the other team we made, <laughs> this team. This is a weird team. It's a fun team, I think. I made a video on this team, the Feather Nuke. Unfortunately, Feathers don't have a row attack. If they did, I could probably drop the Griffin. But the Griffin Axe is like the opener. Aerial Smite, Widespread Inspiration. <laughs> Look at that damage. That's probably overkill as well. Some of these builds, yeah, like this build is overkill and damage now. Some of these builds have like overkill damage for PvE. I made everyone gold too. Gold and black. Uh, let's get them to fight these guys. Now, what is she doing? She's quick covering front row. Okay. Oh, and then she's on Heroes Medallion. Like, she's completely overkill in this squad. She could probably be replaced with the Sainted Knight if you wanted to optimize it for mobility. Alright, now we don't take any damage. They must have got like a lucky hit or something. It's a fun team, though. It's a bunch of elves. Now, the key combo pieces really are the two, or at least one Mirager if you want to run Impetus. And then you just Impetus it, give it an AP. It could even be on three AP. And then when you Impetus, you, gave, you give it one. All right, so they do survive sometimes. Uh, does she counter that? No, I don't think you can counter a counter, because I think it's on active skill. All right, so here's where they're like tanking our front line. Then she goes for a kill. And then there's just a cleric left, I love that. It's like, I am dead. <laughs> then he does his little chip damage. I should I should change that to single, or to multiple targets. Like, don't do it on single target. Two plus enemies present. Yeah, and then we just do like chip damage to kill. And then there's the combo and the heal. The heal combo is very nice. You, it basically lets you not run a healer. And as long as you kill the enemies, which most team comps can kill the enemies, you just get free healing afterwards. So you get the kill. You get a damage unit that acts as a healer, which is pretty huge value. Uh, now, obviously, you could run Sainted over this. That would probably be better. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this one. Just a fun Elven Fencer Nuke for you. So definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this or found this useful, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.